Since I was 12 years old, I made probably over 500 films for clients, for YouTube, for everything. And I always used a still lens when shooting the films. And the client has been happy, I've been happy. But there's a thing called cine lenses. This is a little bit more expensive, it has some other features. Uh, is it a good investment to have this instead of this? So, Mike, they sent us the full kit of the full frame lenses they have. And uh, we wanted to test them out and actually shoot a commercial with lenses and see if this is a good investment for our production company. Actually, there was one YouTube channel where a guy was uh, reviewing the Mikey lenses. Yeah. And he's like, all the time, like, oh, it's so nice to turn and twist the focus ring. Yeah. So, we have uh, high expectations. Yeah, uh, this sets like very high expectations. Yeah, okay, actually, let's so. keep it down. It's okay. Yeah, I've been Yeah. <laughs> this is so nerdy, but it's fun as well. Okay. <clears throat> Officer. I got chills, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And the resistance. Wow. Can you usually let uh, Matthias touch it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. But now I think you kind of, you, you know it's good. I have really high expectations. I expected a little more resistance, actually, but it's like really smooth. Yeah. But yeah, this has actually less resistance. Yes. But this sound, when it stops, it's really nice. <laughs> like ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. Looks so, good. Yeah, here's Looks the kit. really nice. And we're gonna use it for some, uh, some shoots. Mm -hmm. So, coming up, we are shooting a whole commercial with the Mikey lenses to see if they are any good and if they can compete against my Sigma 80-35mm lens. So, the Mikey lenses are full-frame Cineprimes and we got the kit that includes 24, 35, 50, 85 and 105mm focal lengths. So, the good thing about Cine lenses is that it's really practical because you have focus gears and also, you have gears on the aperture. All the lenses are the exact same size and they also weigh pretty much the same. So if you're using it on a gimbal, for example, it's really easy to swap lenses without having to rebalance all the time. Okay, so... Uh, Let's just bring him out for a test. So we wanted to film someone ice skate, but the problem is I'm very bad at it. And Morton was going to film. So that only left us with Uni Maria, our editor. And um, Oh, you're gonna try? <laughs> yeah, let's just say that when she stepped on the ice, something unexpected happened. Sure. Oh, you went backwards. <laughs> you need like no warm up. <laughs> okay, are you, are you ready? What the f? So much. She's actually pretty good. To be honest, I'm not really sure why the guys are so surprised that I can skate. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it to them before, but yeah. So for the gimbal, we used the Fayotech Scorp Pro, uh, and I actually tried to fit 
our C300 Mark III on there and it worked fine. Uh, but I kind of like the Sony A1 and I also wanted to do a full rig. So instead of having like a bare bones C300, I went with an A1 with the wireless follow focus, with a wireless transmitter and uh, with the Mackie lenses, of course. And I think that was a super nice setup. My favorite thing about the gimbal is that you can make the arm longer so you can fit quite big cameras on there, even though it's packaged down quite small. So I was using the pan only uh, function and then I used just the wheel on the side to slowly uh, and accurately like tilt up or down if I needed it during the shoot and that worked really nicely. Because the micro lenses were so small, uh, there were no problem fitting them on the gimbal. Also, it's really nice that it has this 82 millimeter front diameter uh, because on the A1, you don't have the built-in NDs, so we could easily screw on a variable ND filter on the front, and uh, matte boxes are not a good idea for gimbals. I shot everything wide open at T2.1, which was uh, probably a real challenge for Matthias, which was doing the focus pulling. He was doing it on a Tilta uh, Nucleus Nano, uh, on a Axun Sinai 2S Pro signal, uh, but I think he nailed it pretty well. If you want to learn more about the Feotex Score Pro, uh, there's a link in the description. And also you can see some more of the shots we did with this gimbal from the previous episode when we shot in the mountains. But now let's have a look at the things we shot while ice skating. I think the images turned out great and having such a wide range of lenses uh, that we could uh, swap out during the shoot without having to recalibrate the gimbal or anything like that was really, really nice. Uh, in terms of image quality, uh, the images look great, but it's difficult to tell just based on this shoot. So I think we should put it through some more tests. So before we shoot a big commercial with the Mike lenses, let's do a comparison between our still lenses and the Mike lenses. Hey, my name is Jasper. I'm currently working at Views, so you might have seen me in one of the previous episodes of Making a Film Company. Uh, I went out on the streets of Oslo with the Mikey 85mm and 105mm, as well as the Sigma 50 to 100mm. And what I did was basically take the exact same shots on a tripod at the same focal length with the same settings and then just kind of pixel peeped the image and see how that would compare. So obviously this was more of a casual test, it was not a controlled environment because I was shooting outside, but still it was pretty noticeable that the Mikey lenses produced a warmer image and also a softer image with uh, less contrast, which I personally prefer for filmmaking. They also have a T-stop instead of an F-stop, which you may know from photo lenses, but in my opinion having that T-stop for scene lenses is quite the advantage because it tells you how much light exactly reaches the sensor, so it's much more accurate when uh, trying to figure out the correct exposure. I came across a YouTube video made by Matteo Bartoli where he's uh, comparing Sigma 18-35 with the Mike 35mm. 
uh, the version that is meant for Super 35 sensors. And what we could see was that the Mikey lens was a bit warmer. Um, other than that, it was not a significant difference. And the bokeh was a little bit different, and he liked that. And also, it reminded him of a more of a vintage lens. As we always do on this channel, we bring the gear to a real film production. Now we're gonna shoot a commercial, and we're gonna test the full kit of the Mikey lenses and see how they work. So we were shooting a commercial for Vid, which is a university here in Norway, and they wanted the, the look and feel of the commercial to be very naturalistic. They didn't want it to feel too much of a commercial. They didn't want it to have a very stylistic look. So it was actually a perfect test to just, yeah, use the lenses and not do anything like spectacular, but see how they worked on a, on a shoot. So I really like to rig up my camera. The bigger the camera is on set, the more fun I'm having. But the reason is I really like things to be practical. I like having big batteries so I don't have to swap that often. I like having wireless transmitters so that we don't have to use a long SDI cable to the director's monitor. And cine lenses are very practical. So the focus ring goes almost 360 degrees around, which makes it really easy to like pinpoint super accurate focus. And also, since it has focus gears, you can connect a wireless follow focus. One of my favorite things about like Sin lenses and older lenses in general is that they have this actual focus that is mechanical. Uh, I hate that on the new lenses, like the Sony lenses or Fuji lenses, it's all focused by wire, uh, which means that you're actually not controlling the focus manually, you're controlling a motor, so to say, that controls the mechanical stuff. So when you're focusing, there's a tiny bit of delay, which is really noticeable uh, when you're pulling focus for video, and you can't really set A to B uh, completely accurately uh, if you're doing focus by wire. And uh, that's something that's a real benefit with having like this purely mechanical uh, lenses. It's a nice kit. I feel like we 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 didn't miss anything. I didn't I didn't feel like we were lacking in any sort of way. Uh, using them on the shoot was really nice. They they were practical and yeah, they they did the job that they were designed to do. I think we need to talk with a cinematographer who has been using Sin lenses for many years, many projects. So I know you, Wukash, from the film we did together about uh, skating on frozen sand and water in northern Norway. The short film was called Northbound, and I made a documentary uh, on thin ice about the whole project. And you shot this skate film, and you used uh, cine lenses, right? Yes. Uh, so we we shot uh, Northbound with uh, with uh, two red cameras and uh, and set of ultra prime lenses. Being in rough conditions with a storm, and you have skaters moving around, and and. Isn't it a bit like hard to just change lenses all the time while it's a storm and you have to move around quickly? It, wouldn't it be better just to use the Sigma 18 to 35 on that shot? Of course you could uh, choose Sigma zoom lens or some other lightweight zoom lens, but um, for me, it's, there's no problem of changing the lenses in the severe conditions. You can always protect the camera, you can always protect the lens, you can find the right spot for it. Of course, sometimes you're losing more time and it's, it's always, uh, it's always a, a choice you need to make before you, before you go for a shoot. For me, I'm making choices based on the story and, uh, and uh, I'm trying to find out what the story needs, what kind of look based on the conversations with the director and 
based on my analysis, I'm trying to find out what is the best um, best lens for the for the film. In this video, we can see that the Michael lenses we have have a lot, slightly more warm color than the Sigma lenses. Uh, do you think it is a lot of difference when it comes to different brand, when it comes to the look, um, and is there anything you prefer? It's a, it's a lot of different looks, and especially when you go to the vintage lenses, you have. Uh, uh, you, even in the one set, you have lenses which are very different in terms of the tone, in terms of the contrast reproduction, because they were made 50, 60 years ago. In the, in the more modern lenses, each set is very well balanced together to, to, to give you the right reproduction of the colors and, uh, and contrast in, uh, with each focal length. Do you think it's a good idea to invest in thin lenses if you can afford that, or should you just rent them? For for people who are doing um, smaller independent things and short films or independent features or documentaries, I think it's a it's a good idea to have an affordable set of cine lenses just for your use. So you have that flexibility and freedom that without any proper financing, you can go out and do and uh, and deliver some uh, some beautiful images for your for your independent film or documentary. But um, the projects where there is a budget, when there is an um, uh, opportunity to rent the lenses, I think that gives you a lot more uh, creative freedom to, to make uh, nice choices uh, for, your, for your film. I like to keep my eyes open and kind of not, uh, not lock myself with one choice. To summarize, I think that if you're going to invest in some cine lenses, we do recommend the Mike lenses as they are affordable compared to other brands and they are also very good. Uh, if you want to do more run and gun type of uh, films uh, like myself, uh, the Sigma 18-35 is a good choice and you can find this used on many pages uh, for a really affordable price. So don't forget to check out the previous episodes of Making a Film Company. We actually built a whole film production van in the previous episode and we also tested it out in the snowy ice cold mountains in Norway and shot an adventure film. I really recommend you to check out those episodes and you can check them out by pressing a link in the description or a card appearing somewhere up here. Uh, remember to subscribe, we're getting more videos out uh, soon I believe and uh, ha det bra, vi ses!